Hey, rejoining us on the Marmy Rock Show, I say that because they're no strangers to the rock show. We've got Chris Lane, guitarist. I say they. The band is stationed from New York City. Chris is their lead guitarist. They've released a brand new amazing record entitled More Than the Moon. So we thought we'd get Chris back on. Chris, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. So congratulations on the new release, man. I've been listening to it nonstop, riding around in my car today. And uh, how long has the record been in the works? And tell me a little bit about where it was recorded and produced. Sure. All right. I'm going to do it backwards. Yeah. So we did, uh, we worked with the same people that we worked with the first time around. And um, because we love them. And they are very much part of the station family. Uh, I worked with uh, Anthony Lopardo and Ray Marte at uh, Music Refinery. And um, this time also they partnered with another studio called Tone House Studios, all of them on Long Island. And that's where we recorded the drums and the piano. And uh, Mike at Tone House is amazing. So, you know, we very much view them as kind of like the station team, you know. And uh, we, we find a lot of comfort in working with the same people just because, you know, I mean, we all have our little eccentricities and our preferences and they get it. And it's a very comfortable environment. So, um started work, I mean, the actual recording process, we started recording in July of uh, last year, so 2017, and then we finished recording, finished recording just after October, because um, I got married in between there, so, you know, I wanted to make sure that not one part of my life was more stressful than the other, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we finished recording October, and then we mixed it and mastered it, and uh, we've been sitting on it since January, when it was pretty much all done, like, got the final masters. So, um, I commend you guys on the release of the full-length record, and I know you and I have talked about this before. Let folks know you released a full-length, 12-song record here, and uh, talk about that decision versus, you know, a string of singles versus an EP, uh, the thought process. So, um, our biggest problem with this kind of stuff is that we just have too much material that we like and you know if it were up to me um just as songwriter i would just i would just basically have a constant stream of music like kind of like the thinking of like i wrote a song this week so i can now release it to you the problem with that though is that the other side of the thinking is that we view our music kind of like period novels so you know this music represents a solid two years of our our lives and our thinking and our preference and it's going to change you know i mean like already we're working on the third album now and i can see that there's a difference in some of the songs and it's just because we're older different you know like all that kind of stuff so to take music and kind of compile it into these time periods is really the most important thing because it reflects who we are and our, our and it sounds more cohesive um that's one of the reasons why we opted to not include the two singles that we released as standalone on the record is because they were recorded at different times, different studios, different people, and it just it wouldn't sound as homogenous as having that, you know, um, those twelve songs all with the same people. I kind of liken it to if you had a book, you know, and it yeah. had twelve. It'd be like writing twelve of the chapters, and then ten of them were written by one person and two of them by another. They might have the same story, and they might have the same vibe, but there is a different style that goes into it, and it just doesn't feel right to me. So let's talk about a couple of the tunes. Um, the, the first single that came out uh, has a very, very cool video to I Won't Break Your Heart. That video is such a, an awesome job. It, it reminds me of the good old days when you could flip on those kind of cool videos on MTV, so tell folks about it. Well, um, so I, I love making music videos, and I love making music videos that aren't just like guys performing in a basement, which is a lot of what rock and roll has become, um, and I think that's more actually because of budget than it is anything, but um, we've been very fortunate to have some incredible people we work with. I like to think that we're pretty resourceful, too, in trying to make videos that we can make, you know, because we're not working with a million dollar budget, so it's the kind of thing where it's like we want to try to get the biggest bang for our buck, but we also want it to be cool and interesting and, you know, a piece of art as its own. So um, we're always trying to get away from a lot of videos that are just really simplistic in the sense of just us performing, but also add an element of fun and, and happiness that we feel in our music. Yeah, man, I almost saw that as like one of those, you know, the cars used to put out some kind of cool videos that had that kind of vibe of the one you guys did. Yeah, it's just, you know, an element of whimsy, 
I think that that's what's kind of missing from a lot of uh, rock and roll. Because if you take it too seriously, it's really not that serious. <laughs> now, um, I wanted to ask you about a couple more tunes. And the one that kind of surprised me a little bit and caught up on me, and I noticed myself playing it, was an unusual tune, sort of, for you guys. The tune Losing You, it's a lot longer. And it, it's almost a little bit stylistically different than the rest of the record, is it not? Um, you know, yes and no. So one of the things that, that we kind of always... Uh, talk to people about is a lot of people always say, you know, you're, you're very clearly influenced by this band, this band, and this band. And my response to it is always is like, really not, because we're influenced by a lot of classic rock that inspired a lot of bands that people compare us to sometimes. And, you know, I always, I always say is that like, you might say, oh, we sound kind of 80s, or we might sound kind of like this or like that. But the truth of the matter is that we don't actually sound like another band. So style aside, one of the things that we're very into is just we like lots of different things. And, you know, on Losing You, for instance, I love that really thick keyboard element with that single guitar straight up the middle. And, you know, we had this song and we saw an opportunity to kind of rub a different set of influences on it and say to ourselves, you know, hey, we can do this. It still sounds like us, but it doesn't sound exactly like I Won't Break Your Heart. It doesn't sound like everything. It sounds like a different side of us so you know when you're talking about album five when it comes out maybe there'll be more of that losing you influence in there or maybe you know it'll naturally weed itself out it's just that's the kind of the freedom that we like of recording these albums is that we're not slaves to the fact that we need all the same type of song all the time 12 times in a row you know so it's it's a cool thing to have that kind of freedom that's kind of a, a it's a really uh, a great tune man it's you know it's like i said it sneaks up on you it's, it's a longer song and sometimes you get that foot tapping thing but that's one of those kind of little mini journey songs i really really love it you know mm-hmm. so, thank you um and i don't mean journey the band i mean like journey it takes you on a little journey is what i meant by Both of those things are good <laughs> so um one more song i want to ask you about which i believe when we talked offline a little bit was uh, possibly your favorite on the record is the last tune on the album yeah yeah i love that song walking away Tell me a little bit more about it. So, um, I like the song for a couple of reasons. I like the song because it's meaningful to me. Uh, it's about um, when my now wife and I were just dating, just starting to date. Uh, she would stay over in my apartment, and just for some reason, every time we would leave each other in the morning, if I had to like leave or she had to leave, you kind of like slip by saying I love you, but it's too early in your relationship to say I love you. So it kind of creates an awkward feeling, but then at the same time, because you both kind of slip saying it, you're also kind of an acknowledgement. You're like, okay, we're, we're fine. It's cool. So, you know, that side of it means a lot to me. But the, uh, the other side of it too, is that I really think that walking away is the most stripped song we've recorded yet. And, uh, I really like that as a songwriter because there's not a lot of production value that gets in the way of the song. And, you know, sometimes the production enhances the song and you really can't imagine a song without it. In this case, it's really just four guys doing one thing together and uh, that's what breathes life into the song. So I'm very proud of that fact that it, I think it stands up as sounding very cool, but it's really, it was a very, very fast song to record. You know, it's literally the same guitar part. There are no overdub guitar parts other than the same part played several times. You know what I mean? There are no two parts. Yeah. So um, that's cool, too, because as a guitar player, you know, like, like great example, losing you, I'm going to need like an orchestra of guitar players and keyboard players, <laughs> and I'm probably, you know, a guy playing a goat to, to recreate that live. Walking away, if you put me in a room with Emmy, Tony, and Pat, we, will, we can do that exactly. So um, talk about some live shows you've got coming up. I know you got a really cool show with Autograph. Tell us about that one and some other things you got going on. Yeah, so we're playing with, uh, not next week, the week after, we're playing um, Autograph in Massachusetts, and then we're going to be back at the Ritual Playhouse after that, uh, the next day. Then the following week is when we do our tour, of uh, short tour of the Midwest, and we'll be starting it at the M3 pre-party, and then driving overnight to uh, playing Melodic Rock Fest in Chicago. And then that'll start basically a week and a half of us, we're going to hit um, Milwaukee, and St. Louis, and Nashville, and Louisville, and Cincinnati, and a lot of places we've been to before to kind of bring the album in a live venue back to people who, uh, who have heard it. So that's going to be exciting. And then, ironically, the rest of the summer is actually kind of back and forth because we have lots and lots of these 
three day tours and then coming back because we're going to start working more on another album. So, um, really quick, I know you guys are super quick about putting out music videos, and I don't want to rush you because you just released one, but I know you guys crank them out fast. Are we going to expect uh, some more videos off of this record coming our way? I think you can probably expect about four more. Wow. Well, you yeah, you know, you gotta just you gotta do them all the right way to make them so that you don't wait three months to record. Because like every time, it's like a record. In order to, for me to think about releasing another album next year, I need to start thinking about it now. I need to even be in the process of recording it now because it takes so long. So like, we recorded that music video in early February, and I, I'm not exaggerating when I tell you the final draft of it came Thursday night before it was released. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was, a, it was a slightly stressful situation, but at the same time, it was done. Hey, so you mentioned like you know that you just have this wealth of songs that you guys have. Have you ever given one away or thought about giving one away to another band and said, you know what, I'm gonna either not even sell it or you know just give it off to another band? Has that ever happened? Um, not for this kind of music. So, so I, I I'm the principal songwriter of the band, and I find myself writing. I write a lot, a lot of music, a lot of music that that no one's heard from station. And I find that the majority of the music that I write is not like Station. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I feel very strongly about is that in order to breathe life into what I consider to be like a rock and roll songwriting kind of thing, I need Pat, and I I need Tony, and I need Emmy, and we kind of build it together. Because if another artist recorded those songs, it just wouldn't sound like Station. So... I don't think I'm at the point now where I, I, I feel comfortable saying to myself, okay, I can take these songs and, and send them to someone else because I don't know if I trust anyone to do the right thing with them yet. Um, I've written for other artists, but I usually tend to write more pop-based music for other artists. So, you know, when it comes time to that, it's a different side of the songwriting. Well, man, the record's out this week. It's more than the moon. I'm absolutely loving the record. I've been hitting the thing on repeat, listening to it a ton in the car already. So a uh, home run release from Station. Uh, Chris Lane, Thank man. You. Yeah, man, you guys really nailed it with this one. And uh, they're from New York City. Catch them out on tour. Catch them at the M pre-party. They're back there again. That's always a good time. And uh, Chris, man, we'll be keeping an eye on what I think could be uh, Station's biggest year to date, possibly, huh? I hope so. We'll see. And then next year we'll follow that. (laughs) Hey, Chris, man, thanks so much for being back on the show. Thanks for having me, man.